got I got a friend that's got a backhoe and, and land. Are we recording already? We are, oh. but nothing's official. Would you? Oh, hit? oh Jesus! <laughs> I have the rental insurance. I'm not afraid. I don't. To use. <laughs> oh, it's on my insurance. All right, send it to the group, Clint. Before we start today's show, please visit the sponsors, affiliates, and friends of the Stagecoach. The Self Defense Gun Stories podcast, hosted by Rob Morse, brings you recent examples of armed civilians protecting themselves and who they love. The show helps you determine if people were lucky or trained. Maybe both. Self Defense Gun Stories is on all of your favorite podcast outlets. TheGunFood.com has an extensive network of partners to connect you with your guns, ammunition, and firearm training. The Gun Food only sells ammo that they trust. Use RSWC as a discount code and save 5.56% on your order at thegunfood.com. PowerTac flashlights have combined premium craftsmanship, American ingenuity, and cutting-edge technology, creating a highly dependable tool that you can trust your life with. Go to powertac.com slash RSWC and save 15% on your order. That's powertac.com slash RSWC. Saber Pepper Spray has been making grown men cry since 1975. Find the link in the show description and help get the stagecoach across America with every Saber Red purchase you make. Shotgun with Charlie. Riding shotgun refers to the practice of sitting next to the driver in a moving vehicle. The term riding shotgun came around after the time of the stagecoach when somebody used to sit next to the driver holding a shotgun in case they ran into bandits. My name is Charlie Cook and I drive a lot. I like to talk to people while I'm driving, so I interview people in my car while I'm driving. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Charlie. All right, before we start this episode of Writing Shotgun with Charlie, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. If uh, you are listening to the show in podcast form, please share the show with your friends. This is how we get the stagecoach across America. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a very cool show because I am back with a couple friends of mine, Matt Mallory, Clint Macro, and we are filming this on a cold, rainy day at the SHOT Show Range Day. I've only been to two of these. Both times it's been rain and coldy. Has it really? This is the opposite of what I thought a desert would be like. And this year, they merge the media and industry together all day because of the rain. Because of the rain. Yeah. Yes. Usually it's media in the morning, in the, morning. No, in, the, in the afternoon and industry in the morning, I think. No, I think it's the other way around. Is it? They okay. like media I'm first. I'm just like, that's right. It likes dissing. That's fine. This, this, this. All right. It's great to have you guys back on. It's been a few years. Yeah. Last time we did a show, we were also... In Las Vegas. Yes. That's right, it was. It was. We wow. filmed a show. We went and got some coffee. Yeah. And uh, good times. So that was like three, four years ago, wasn't it? It was pre-COVID? Yes. It was, it was 20... It was 20, just before 20, 20, 2020. 2020. Yeah. 2020 is when we did that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. Time does fly. Yeah, when you're... When you're... Uh, yeah. you know, Should doing, we not speak about it, though? We're in day. We are not. <laughs> we're, all, we're all going to end up with a shot show crud anyway. Oh, no, no. no. So. I've, been, I've been eating up on my emergency. <laughs> eating, eating your vitamins and saying your oh, prayers? Oh, my goodness. Yes, I don't want to take any crud home. Oh, God, no. God, no. All right, so what have you guys been up to? So, Matt, since the last time we've been, uh, since we had a show like this, you and I have started a show. Yes, we do our we do. collaboration. It's been two years since we've done been doing that. Dang. Hi, man. I tell you. I just, know. Yes. What, what is the saying? If uh, you, you do what you love, you never work a day in your life? Something like Something that. Something like that, yeah. That's what they say. No, yeah, for sure. Oh, so that's been fun. We've had some uh, some good guests on. We've had some good guests, yeah. And that's pretty cool because we do that live and we do it so that people can um, reach out to us. Somebody's reaching out to me right now. Um, <laughs> Vibrating. Okay. Uh, yeah, we do it live so people can chime in and, mm -hmm. and watch on all of our social media outlets, which is cool. Yeah, we're going to be doing it again. Yep, we're doing one tomorrow. Oh, we're doing one. Yes, we're doing one here at Shot. Yep. Which, which would be cool. So that's that's pretty exciting. With, uh, 
Next Level Training, Mike and Britt. Mike and Britt, we've had those guys. You guys hooked me up with them uh, in 2020. Mm. Um, the first time I brought out your car. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this one? And I know, this one's nice. Uh, as as uh, Rob Campbell likes to say, we've got the insurance and we're not afraid to use it. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so we've been doing that. What else has been going on with you? You've been teaching classes all over the country. Yeah, all over. I slowed down a little bit because of the New York CCA law. I've been teaching a lot more of the 18-hour class in New York. Yeah. So I haven't been traveling as much as I did yet last year or the year before. Still traveling. Mm -hmm. um, but trying to about once a month, once every other month from somewhere in the, in the country teaching class. I was just in Ohio last month. Nice. Yeah. You know, um, what classes can you teach? You have, you have like a list. This is going to be the rest of the show. What <laughs> classes What it's, classes can Matt Mallory teach? So it's about 95 now is what I 95 show can teach the, uh, classes. But in reality, I probably do on a regular basis 15 to 20 maybe. Yeah. You know, the ones that you know, the money goes where people want it, the interest leads to. Sure. But self-preservation is the, the umbrella of it. Voter ed, driver ed, hunter ed. Taser, pepper spray. Wait, you drive self-defense? Yeah, I do driver ed too. I don't do as do it as much, but it's more now. I just direct them to the website for them to do the online stuff. But yeah, right. I've done the driver ed one. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, law enforcement. I just completed an academy. Graduated graduated eight recruits from my academy. Got another one coming up this fall. New York State Law Enforcement Academy. I'm the director. Nice. And lead instructor for it. Cool. Security guard training as well. Don't do I do that probably a handful of times a year. Retired law enforcement, Leosa. Mm -hmm. And then obviously rifle, pistol, shotgun, that kind of stuff too. So the spattering throughout the year. The thing I do the most of is the class for people to get their pistol license in New York State. I do that weekly, almost almost weekly if I'm not traveling. Right. Now this has gotten worse since <laughs> the Bruin case, right? Yeah. New York State, they doubled down. In June, it was, it was uh, the Bruin decision. And July is when they turned around and basically voted into law the Concealed Carry Improvement Act. Or as I, I like to call it the Concealed Carry Improvement Atrocity. Nice, and uh, it's just made it made it worse and worse. Even though the courts are you know, whittling it apart, it's still pretty intrusive. Yeah, they just changed the name from proper cause, which was the original Bruin decision, the original mm -hmm. lawsuit from New York State Rifle and Pistol Pistol Association, ISERPA. Um, proper cause was thrown out. New York State now calls it good moral character. The so to me, the, the ironic thing about the good moral character is uh, the person that signed this. This bill yep. was the uh, then unelected Governor Hochul, who replaced uh, Governor Cuomo, who left due to uh, yep. uh, uh, what uh, like groping women in an elevator or something. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, sexual, uh, you know, sexual assault. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and then his predecessor before that was uh, also booted out of office. Spitzer. You know, it's just a corrupt government in New York State. <sighs> yeah, it, it really is. Or it's organized. It's legalized crime. I mean, everything. They're making it. They got prostitution. Right. They got, who knows? We're going to turn this way. Sure. Because that's what the dots on the on the thing say. Um, sorry. Oh, they're going to make prostitution legal. They got a bill going forward for that. They're going to make uh, hallucinogenics legal. They've got a mushroom bill going forward to make that legal in New York State. Yep. Is it because all the politicians are doing drugs and dropping mushrooms? <laughs> I think it's because everybody's leaving. They're trying to find ways to, to get money from the... <laughs> the people Residence, that are yeah. Hey, you can stay. Just be stoned. Yeah. Be stoned. Just get high. Be Don't illegal. Worry about a thing. You know, how many illegal? Oh we, my God. Illegals do we have? Yeah, we have that in Massachusetts too. It's it's just getting crazy everywhere. And I think. Oh, one of the new cool courses I'm doing that I came up with is called Build Your Own Two A Bear, and Bear is B E A R. Nice, capital A, capital yep. R. And that's it's not about hunting, even though the Second Amendment does have the word bear in it. Right. It's cool. So that that was good. I've got another another one. Coming up in March, and I've got five signed up for that so far. Nice. It's March, so. Um, what kind of uh, what kind of things do you have to cover with the the sixteen hours? Law. So what I did when I when I put it together, I looked at all the classes I'm already teaching, and I basically just compiled them. Do you have approved classes? Mm, approved content. So they have approved a certain content. they have, they have okay. topics that you have to cover for a certain amount of time. Uh, some of them have a time scale to them, and you got to cover the law, you got to cover gun safety, you got to cover um, some of the sensitive and restricted locations. Right. Who can have a gun? The 926A of the federal law, or not, I'm sorry, uh, U.S. Code 18 of the federal law. So there's 
different topics. I basically had to spend, I probably had a, a uh, suicide prevention is a new one they added, mm-hmm. which is good. I, I, you know, sure. I, I think that's a good thing you're talking about. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, do you have live fire and what kind of qualifications do you have for that? <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> well, the, the director of the New York State Troopers at the time, he also got forced out to retire because of some things that he was doing shady, supposedly. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, cr- corrupt government. <laughs> um, I, I hate the fact that I'm not involved in anything shady. Mm-hmm. I mean, other than you guys, but. Uh, oh, <laughs> dang. So it's uh, 12 feet. Yeah, eleven and a half by twenty-five inches target. Okay, so B twenty basically B twenty-seven eight uh, eight eight ring, um, and you got to get four out of five shots. Four out of five shots. So it's five shots. It's five shots. Is it like one of those government tests? After you get four shots, you don't have to do the fifth. <laughs> like you've met, I don't know. I've you've just met had the qualif- all five. <laughs> you've met the qualification with four shots. You can stop there. Yeah, I've trained about a thousand people in the past year. In wow. class, and I've had one person fail the life fire. Oh my gosh! So, but, all right. And then the written test, they got an eighty. Uh, I I made my test up. They just said they got to have a test. Yeah. And they got to get um, they got to get uh, they can only miss at my test fifty questions. They can only miss uh, ten. So, gotcha. Eighty percent. All right. And I've had maybe a handful of people fail that test, and then I just let them retake it. They're probably saying they can't. Right. And I think I've maybe out of total it's, out of the thousand, I've maybe had five that I've failed. And then <laughs> out of the five, I probably had one that I would not give a certificate to. The rest of them I did remedial with, and they came back and practiced, and then mm-hmm. were able to pass. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Because I don't want to fail them. I mean, it's, but I, I'm right. not going to just let them walk out with a certificate if they can't, you know, if they can't keep their finger off the trigger when it's important. Sure. Absolutely. No. I mean, it's a good it's a good class. I just hate that the government's mandating that they do it. Yeah, so this is so we have we're, uh, Massachusetts decided to see what New Jersey and New York were doing and then said, hey, we're going to take both of those and make it worse. And that's usually how it works, right? Exactly. So like on the one year anniversary, it was right around the one year anniversary of the Bruin decision. Massachusetts came out and said, hey, we're going to do something, too. We've got this bill. Um, we're trying to trying to cram down the house's throat to, to make it so that um, Everybody has to have live fire, a written exam, um, de-escalation classes, and some yeah, and, that um, yeah, and then some live, uh, active shooter training. And it seems crazy to me that a lot of people that want to take classes are often um, not not a lot, but there are people that want to take classes because their significant other has a gun in the house right. or there is a gun in the house and they want to be able to be safe with it. But now they're going to have to do active shooter training just so they can get a license to carry because they're going to have access to a, a gun in the house. So here's the kicker. Now we have to do a semi-automatic rifle designation on your pistol license in upstate. So to buy a semi-automatic <laughs> rifle, you have to have a designation on your pistol license. And people are like, but I don't want a pistol license. I just want to buy a semi-automatic rifle. Right. And they're like, on Onondaga County where I live, they're like, well, you know, you just get your pistol license and we'll add the designation to it. But I don't want a pistol license. Well, there's nothing in written in the law that tells you what to do to get a rifle license because there's no rifle license. So now people are li- so literally scary. have to go in an Onondaga County, not law again. They're making them take a four-hour safety course, which I teach, to be able to get a premise license, which means they cannot take guns out of their uh, handguns out of their home at all. Not to even practice, which isn't that the whole purpose of the <laughs> training is so they have practice so that they're safe for the guns. Right. And they're proficient and they hit their intended target. So there's target. nothing in the law that's saying that they can take the guns out of their home, take it to the range to practice even. Okay. You can't take it to the gun store to get it worked on. Nothing. There's nothing written in the law that they can take. The premise license means you can have it at home. That's it. You're not allowed to take it out of your house. This is off, off your premise or business. It's premise or, or business. Is the this is ridiculous. It so is. Uh, what I notice is this. People that make gun laws are not gun folks. So true. So they come up with a the assault weapon term. Huh? That's why I um, got our fully semi-automatic assault rifle. Exactly. Our shirt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't shoot your eye out. Oh, She's got two Daisy Red Rider BB guns. Oh my god! <laughs> it's so stupid, man. It's it so is. stupid. It's we just... uh, so in Massachusetts, part of this bill that we have is uh, we have the the five evil features of an assault weapon: uh, pistol grip, collapsible stock, flash hider, bayonet lug, and grenade launcher. Mm-hmm. And, I got that from New York, I think, from the Safe Act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Cool. And then um, now it's if you have more than one evil feature, yeah. it is an assault weapon. And the new build is going to say if it has one evil feature, it's an assault weapon. So you're not going to be able to have an AR style with a fixed uh, fixed uh, fixed see. stock. No, with a fixed stock. Okay. Um, or with a flash rider, um, you can't have a pistol grip, right? But here's the crazy thing: if it's not, if it's a fixed magazine, right. then all of that gets thrown out because it has to be a semi-automatic with a detachable magazine, yeah. does more than ten rounds, and has more than one of the evil features. Mm -hmm. That's the same in New York, and people will pin the magazine in New York. But the law says if it's if it can be readily restored or converted back to. So that's that gray area where I've got New York State Troopers on their firearms division on a recorded call saying that anybody that takes a semi-automatic rifle that is an assault weapon mm -hmm. and converts it to something that's got a pin magazine, they've illegally converted an assault weapon to some other weapon. And I go, and it was, we're like, uh, so is there a case law? Can you refer us to case law where somebody's been charged? Well, nobody's been charged for that. No. So they say they consider it illegal, but nobody's been charged. That's, that's scary because it's like anybody can be charged at any time if they really wanted to push the case. Yeah, But absolutely. I don't think they think they're going to get a, a good jury, so that's probably why they don't make a, they don't make anything of it. It's so ridiculous. It is. It's scary. Yeah, it's it's scary that the, that they that their mindset is just on us, good legal law, moral prudent people that just want to defend ourselves. But yet, bad guys are out there. You know, it's like the whole COVID shot with illegal illegals coming over the border. You know, they. They didn't make them get a shot when they came into the country. That illegally. is when you know it was all BS. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah. Did absolutely. you get the shot? Did you get the shot? Shit, no. There's three of us. There's three of us that did not get the shot. You yeah, know, I, uh, I, w I was going around for a while. I'm like, you know what? I don't like the government telling me what to do. So when the mask mandate's done, I'm going to keep wearing a mask. <laughs> I'm going to keep wearing it. Be like, hey, you listen. don't need to wear a mask anymore. No, I'm like wearing it. it. I, don't, I want the government. I'm not. The government's not going to tell me to take it off. I'm going to wear it everywhere. You know, now you say that, I, I pictured a mask in my in my mind with an open mouth on it and a bunch of COVID germs. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a cool mask? I, I'm sure you could find one of those. Probably. Too, for sure. Uh, I actually thought about just wearing a black bandana. Just put a black bandana around my neck. Right? You go with that. Go walk into a store, put it above my face. Yeah. Then I thought about this. I'm like, what if, you know, all the stores had masks that they were giving people? And, oh, you need to wear a mask. You need to wear a mask. Uh, and I was like, what if I had a store and I let everyone have a gun? Say, listen, you know what? There's, we got robbery in our town. People are stealing stuff from our store. So what you we're going to do is, yeah, you walk in the store, you're going to you're gonna put a gun on because this is what we do. <laughs> you got to protect yourself, right? You guys both have universal background checks in your state, so that wouldn't work. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but if, if, if somebody, an unlicensed person, is um, uh, with working with someone at a range, then they can... Uh, then they can handle a firearm. Right. It's well, so ridiculous. There's some concessions like that in New York, too. It's so ridiculous. It's probably less. Yeah. Are, are there any lines on the road? Yeah, you're in, <laughs> you're, you're in a no lane. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Hope you shoot straight. Oh, waka, waka, waka. It's always oh funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so one thing that you've done over the past couple of years is you became a taser instructor. Yes, taser, actually a master taser instructor. Master Taser. Yes, that and Saber Master Instructor Clint and I did that uh, quite a few years, years ago. Over here. And been racking up the Master Instructor, Senior Training Counselor, all that, trying to train that next level up, right? Yeah. And always trying to, to move on up like Jefferson and Lisa. <laughs> nice. And what about you? You did, uh, we did the Saber Yes, you, you came to Massachusetts. We did the Saber, uh, the Saber Instructor course with a number of people, yeah. which was pretty fun. And then um, we did the UTM class too. Yeah, the Force on Force. Yes, the Force on Force class. Force on Force instructor. And I, I hate saying this, I did shoot my good friend Mark Lindblom. <laughs> was, I call we call him the Bay State King of Blocks, the B S K O G. <laughs> yes, and um, this is this is kind of ridiculous. Um, Mark came to Shot Show with me as uh, my photographer plus one. Yes, my, my plus one. <laughs> Sorry, Petrolino. Um, oh, yeah. forgot about him. Next year. So, I don't, John, is the, John doesn't have to worry about his own being a plus one. He's going to get in on his own. But anyway, um, so Lynn Blom came with me this year, and I had a, um, I, had a, I called up one of my logo friends, and I'm like, I need a logo that says BSKOG, and it's in the shape of Massachusetts, and I want the G to be Cape Cod. 
Oh. So she came up with a little design of this. That's creative. I had her embroider it on some shirts, and that's what he's going to be wearing around. Wow. So that'd be pretty cool. Very anyway, cool. so we did the pepper spray class, and then we yep. did the UTM class. Yep. And uh, just, what, about four months ago, the uh, ATF came out and said, hey, UTM, no importing. Beginning of October. And the, the rumor in the industry was is that there was something going on in the ATF where they wanted to reclassify non-lethal training ammunition. And because of that reclassification, I think they put it underneath destructive devices or something, which means that if it's manufactured outside of the United States, it couldn't be sold to civilians. So both simunitions and UTM now can no longer sell to civilians when it comes to the non-lethal training ammunition. So it really put a kibosh on the whole. You know, we travel in the country, sort of find hundreds of instructors all yeah. over the place, and force on force under the UTM brand. It really put a kibosh to that pretty quick. Yeah, no kidding. No uh, kidding. But I've got a meeting with UTM uh, on Friday. Nice. To see where things are going, seeing if they're planning on doing Standard. anything. And have a meeting with the ATF. Uh, what's shocking, I, I guess it shouldn't be shocking, is uh, is the ATF and the FBI comes to SHOT Show every year, don't they? I actually sat on the, the, the tram, or not the tram, the bus, to the uh, car rental place next to one of the federal fish and wildlife game guys. Had a good conversation. That's cool. My newest shirt, though. Did I tell you my newest shirt? Not yet. Bowl of soup. <laughs> it's yeah. got a spoon in it. Yeah. And it says, Tyranny Soup. And it's got ATF, FBI, DOJ. Nice. All these alphabet agencies floating around in the soup. Oh my God, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. But what do we do? Keep on trucking. Keep on trucking, man. Putting, putting up the good fight. That's it. People got to vote. Though. I think that's, you know, your vote um, counts. People that say, well, my vote don't count. It don't count if you don't vote. Yeah, it really doesn't. And of course, if you don't vote, you really can't complain about stuff. It's true. It's kind of like that adage, you're walking down the street and somebody's laying on the ground, they're hurt, and you're like, well, somebody else must have called 911. Right. If everybody says somebody else called 911, what if nobody called 911? Yeah, exactly. Right. Everyone says someone else is going to do it. Vote. It's yeah. one thing we, it's, we can do. Staying with the theme there of nobody voting and nobody doing anything, uh, there was a documentary on Netflix. Yeah. It was called, I think it was like 37 Windows, 38 Windows. Okay. It was about Kitty Genovese. Uh, she was the woman that was stabbed in New York City. Yes. And then um, she was left in like a doorway. Yeah. And the guy came back. She was still alive. She's yelling for help. A bunch of people heard her and um, nobody came and helped her. And then the guy came back, raped her and stabbed her. I'm not sure if he raped her and stabbed her more, but he still did harm to her. And nobody did anything wow. because everyone's like, well, someone else will help. Someone else will uh, She died, right? She, yes. She is no longer with us. Yeah. That's 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 is ridiculous. But yeah, people people do need to get involved. They do, do need to vote, and uh, they do need to go out and get stuff done, man. It's uh, a friend of mine was telling me that some statistic he read said that eighty percent of the people, eighty uh, percent of the people believe in term limits, and um, term limits aren't anything that anything that comes up. We've had that conversation. We've had that conversation as far as that it happened in the past, right, Clint? What about term, term limits? limits? Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about that. And it's kind of a, you, if you look at Wa George Washington, he decided not to run again. Right. It wasn't until, was it FD, F, uh, FDR? Mm -hmm. Was it FDR that had three terms? And then they're like, wait a minute. Actually, technically four. Oh. Was it four? Yeah, he died in the, or he he died, he died yeah. in the inauguration or something. Yeah. Or wow. just after inauguration. That's remember. crazy. Yeah, so that's, I think at some point, what is it, the old saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think mm. that's. At some point, we got to protect ourselves from ourselves. Mm. So I agree. I think term limits, it's its time for it because you've got politicians that are doing it as a career. <laughs> I did. I did. <coughs> it's, it's the elected class. Yeah. Yeah, it totally is. It totally, totally is. Yeah. Way too many people in the position for way too long. Way too long. Yeah. Make it Everyone a makes a career out of that now. Exactly. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And then, of course, you know, it's... It's a job where they only make what one hundred and fifty thousand a dollars a year, and they walk out millionaires. Yeah, I mean, technically speaking, engagements, books, and inside trading. Book. Did I say oh, that? Wait. Well? <laughs> I mean, it's okay right. for Martha Stewart. It's, it's not okay for Martha Stewart, oh, but right. it's okay for uh, Pelosi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It is, and everybody knows it. That's why I, I don't. That I is don't, the most shocking part. It is, and they let it go on. They let. Well, that's just politicians. They're right. 
It's so, ridiculous. So you, right. are you part of the problem if you just, like, you don't stand up and, you know, vote against them? Right. You don't vote? Well, I'm not going to vote because the system's rigged or they're all crooks. Well, that's the reason why you should vote. Yeah, that's what so they want you to do. Yes, that's exactly what they want you to do. Totally. All right, how do we pull a U-turn over here, guys? I have no idea. Well, there's right. a couple ways you could approach that. <laughs> you want it legal or do you want to just do it? <sighs> I would say get off at Lake Mead Parkway. Uh, I'm going to get off at Lake Mead Parkway and hopefully find some place where we can get right back on this road. What is this road? That we're on? The 11, I think is what they call it down here. It says 564. I don't see an 11. All right, I think we're on 11. Oh, Interstate 11. Let me throw my GPS on. Dude, I think the GPS is on. <laughs> it's, it's taking us to the range. It is? <laughs> it is. I'm following these little dots that you guys used to get to the range. I used their phone this morning. I don't think I did. No, I used my phone. I don't know, man. Yeah, so I've been I've been retracing. Sure. I've been trying to retrace the dots. Oh, you're you're following the wrong thing, buddy. Oh. Uh, don't tell me I'll follow that wrong thing. Well, hang on. All right. So, uh, yeah. So we're just gonna pull your turn. In a quarter mile, make a U-turn. <laughs> the voice. Well, I don't know why it does that. Every once in a while, just some girl's voice, sounds like she's talking out of a helium balloon, comes up. <laughs> like, what the I heck? Still, I think there's a setting for that on your phone. No, dude. It changes back to normal. It's, when she doesn't have helium? Yes. <laughs> helium free. All right. We're at a stop sign. You want to do a, uh, can we say a Chinese fire? Oh, shit. Oh, watch out for the cars. Oh, no. oh got to unlock. <laughs> I love this. Oh, it wasn't open. Oh, it's a problem. Nobody's looking at us. No, they don't care. I didn't run around the car. Though, so. it's oh, like, man. Next step. Uh, what, uh, somebody told me what they call this in Minnesota, and I f forgot what it was. Uh, oh, it was called... Um, I got a lot of things. Hit and, was, was it called <laughs> Hitting Shitties? Hitting Shitties? No, oh. Hitting Shitties was making donuts in the in the parking lot with your car. They call <laughs> oh, it oh, oh, oh. Like, I was seeing something totally different. I was <laughs> seeing donuts. It's just yeah. a, a, this is a, okay, it's a PG rated show. <laughs> yeah. Or is it now? Yeah, not, not anymore. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, James. <laughs> James Polk, oh my God. I got to tell you, man, I, um, I absolutely love it when, uh, when me and one of the guests, like, say the same thing at the same time. Yeah. I love Kids. that stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we now have Clint Macro. Yes, sir. See, I always feel that I should honor the voice, and I stop, I pause, and let her finish, and then right. It's because it's a I'm, female's voice. It is. That that's what it is. I'm letting her finish because I don't want to get lost. Okay, there eleven we go. south. There we go. You you have had a lot of changes since the last time we were on the show. Yes. Um, well, I got LASIK. You didn't think I was I, going there. I, I, I did. Yeah. I did not. <laughs> but no. I do. I'm like, he's not wearing glasses, is he? No, I, I got LASIK. Uh, I actually took a gig. I, Yo, hold I, on. Let's talk about the LASIK for a second. Because yeah. where else can you talk about a gun podcast about corrective eye surgery? Did you do both eyes at once? Yes. And really? Yes. I just got it done and uh, I got fixed my far vision. So ultimately, I'll probably need to get readers. Gotcha. Some I mean, ben you know, Franklin's. it'll just be one of those things that I'll have to do. But right. I was really kind of analyzing my own personal defense strategy as my own family first responder, and all the stuff I had in place would mean nothing if you knocked my glasses off. Without my glasses, I was like Mr. Magoo. Like, you right. know, you would be blurry right now where you were. So, wow. That's I went problem. ahead and did it, and it was nerve wracking. I mean, you know, you always think, is this the right decision? Is this yeah. going to work? Um, the, the woman who did it, I think, is a dominatrix in her off time. She was like, put your head here. Don't move. And so ah, it was, it was she interesting. She slapped you with some rubber. <laughs> she did. And she said, if you move your eye during the procedure, you will go blind. Nice. Like, I was scared to death. I'm like, yes, yes, dude, yes, yes. But yes, yeah, so that was interesting. But I tell you what, like it was in and out. You know, I certainly had. I really didn't have a good view of like the time that was going by, but I think I was in and out of there in like less than 10 minutes. Oh, really? And I came out and, you know, it was bright and blurry a little bit, but I could see without my glasses on, which was something that, you know, I, I have it done for years. Yeah. Yeah. I got my glasses like in sixth grade. Did this, uh, did it change your dominant eye? 
I'm, I'm discovering some changes there. Now, it yeah. didn't change my dominant eye, but I'm relearning my eyesight. Okay. So, you know, like we're, I'm relearning my eyesight. It, it is a bit of a process, but still, you know, I happen to be one that believes in the body's ability to use kinesthetic alignment to hit your target. Yeah. And therefore I can still be able to hit high center chest and I can shift the focus to the front side. I can focus on the front side at full extension. So like, it's, it's good, but I am like my periphery is different. Yeah. Uh, things, one of the things that was actually interesting was everything looked bigger because, you know, glasses, especially the Coke bottles I used to have just kind of made, you know, it was like looking through a magnifying glass. Right. So I got done like, well, look how big my hand is. <laughs> and it was, it was such a joy to go to the bathroom for the first time. I felt like such oh a bigger man, God, a better man. I was not yeah. going to bring that up. Yeah. But, no, but seriously, everything looked bigger. So, that so was your wife's having LASIK? <laughs> no, no, she's already had it. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah she goes, no, honey, it's no different. It's, it's, it's the same. Right. Yeah. She had it about 20 years ago. So that was nice to have her there. Cause she's like, no, this is normal. Your eyes are getting, your eyes get dry. It's fine. Yeah. You know, eventually it'll stop doing that. So it's been, she was very supportive of it. Well, she wanted me to do it a long time ago, but yeah, uh, definitely, you know, if all this stuff that we do, all the training, you know, we want to be able to positively identify our target, put the gun where we're looking, all this stuff, you know, kind of result revolves around us being able to see. Yeah. For sure. And if you just went like this and flick my glasses off, like this would be good, really. So I felt, all right, I need to invest in that infrastructure. So I'm glad I did it. Cool. My eyes are still a little bit dry. So, yeah. you know, as, as they get really dry, distance gets a little blurry, but I put some drops in and shh, it's good. So everyone tells me the dryness will eventually go away. So that's kind that's of cool. in that process. That's cool. How long ago did you have this? Uh, actually about six months. About six months. So uh, I've talked to some people and the dryness lasted a little bit longer. Others, it was gone by now, but yeah. I'm still, I got to deal with the dryness towards the end of the day. Uh, it could be worse. But I can see without my glasses. Dude, I got to tell you, I, I got uh, glasses when I was a kid. And when I was a teenager, I'm like, I want contacts because I do not want to wear glasses. And um, I've been wearing hard contact lenses, gas permeable hard lenses since, I don't know, sometime in the 1980s. And uh, the last time, this this is horrible. Uh, the last time I went in for an eye exam was, uh, I broke a contact in January of 2019. Oh, wow. And I had an eye exam then. And, and I told the, the optrician, I'm like, I wear hard lenses. I don't think it changed like you doesn't doesn't let my eye change shape and um i swear to god she like did the exam and she's like yeah it's very much the same prescription you had before yeah, and it's been five years since i've been with the eye doctor <laughs> so if you don't need to go with it don't go oh uh, that's the way i see it i right. felt that you see it <laughs> it's oh i know what um all right so new job yeah i I've, I've kind of kept this separate in my social media life and my public side because I still have Trigger Pressers Union. I'm still teaching classes. I'm still doing all of that. I still am administering National Train of Teacher Day. I still have my recording studio. Uh, I'm still president of Allegheny County Sportsman's League. I'm still vice president of Firearms Owners Against Crime uh, Institute in Pennsylvania. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been contract. I've been a contractor for USCCA for many years, and they offered me a gig a couple of years ago. And I went ahead and took it. And so I basically work as uh, a trainer, but also a consultant for our official partners. I help them maximize their business. You know, some partners are like, hey, it's me. I'm here to help you. Okay, fine. And other ones, like I'm actually sitting down, helping them to take USCCA curriculum and develop uh, a, a training path mm -hmm. to give their, you know, their company more opportunities to, you know, bring more people in and get them to be a return customer. Yeah. I work with marketing. So yeah, I'm a, like a business consultant, but I also obviously still train people to use our USCCA curriculum. Mm -hmm. That's been a pretty interesting thing. But the first, the first job I ever applied for was this gig. So like they say, how many jobs you applied for? One when I was 47, and I haven't. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, three, about three years now in May. That's cool. But I still, you know, I still have my anonymity. I still go off and do my other things. I have to be careful what hat I'm wearing when I say certain things. Yeah. Which makes sense, you know, because I, I don't want someone to perceive, you know, like the Allegheny County Sportsman's League position on something as maybe that's what the USCCA thinks. Right. Although a lot of times there's, there's you know, consistency there, but I have to be very careful. 
So uh, that's really cool. Yeah, because I see you all the time traveling around the country. Yeah, teaching here, teaching there, teaching here. Yeah, but I still, you know, trigger presser class, the uh, uh, personal defense network training tour. Yeah. We haven't even announced the training tour. Rob's going to announce it, I think, on Thursday. But I've got six dates, I think, already booked. Nice. Around the Northeast, so yeah, I, I, I publish my numbers every year. So every year at the, on New Year's Day, I gotta wait for it. Uh, okay, so on New Year's Day, I go through and I look at how many classes I taught, how many instructors I certify, what classes, what certifications, you know, how many private coachings, and I kind of compile data. And I've got data going back, I think, over ten years, quite quite a few years. And this year, I looked at the data and I thought, no, I'm not reaching enough of my fellow Americans and users, right? So uh, I started out at the beginning of the year, I got a lot of classes booked, many more than I did last year. Which means, you know, like I'm going to be traveling during the week for Delta and then I'll be traveling on the weekend for, for Trigger Presses Union, but that's okay. That's cool. You, know, you got you to gotta do what you need to do. And I believe my purpose is to help empower my fellow Americans to exercise that right protect themselves and their family and be their own first responders. Here, here. Yeah. You don't have that on a business card, do you? Uh, it sounds all bright. It sounds all over here. Yeah, I see. <laughs> right. A little bit bigger. Yeah. You know, with his new eyes, you can read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, this past year, I actually became a USCCA instructor. Yep. And I did it with uh, Bill Dalby, or as we call him, the Dal. Yeah, Bill's good people. Yes, he is. Uh, Bill is good. And, um, yeah, so I did that with him. That was really cool. That was really fun. Um, but I'm one of those people that's been slacking. Yeah. Well, you know, I need to. Uh, I need to. Uh... So here's one little issue. I get on the website and I don't know what I'm looking for. That's what my issue is. Well, I tell you what, we can set up a consultation and I can walk you through. Let's do it. It's, I, it's, I, and it's not that Bill hasn't done. You know, it's not that Bill hasn't done anything. I just I get on the website. I'm like, all right, I got to figure this out. And uh, I look at it, and I'm like, all right, I don't know what I'm looking for. And then I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll deal with this later. And then, you know, a yeah, month goes it, by. And instructors get overwhelmed. Going. And especially, like, you know, you have a bigger range. And you got, like, the owner and you got the, the training guy. And, and they, they get overwhelmed, too, with all the different options that you have and the possibilities. Yeah. You know, with the Lego, or I, I say Lego blocks. The mini classes are like Lego blocks. So you can take different mini classes, put them together, make a new... Do uh, class products out of that, and, you know, combine that with a dry handling exercise or dry fire or surf pistols mm -hmm. or, you know, simulators or live fire, maybe a very simple live fire or a comprehensive like multiple day thing. Yeah. There's so many options. And a lot of times I think companies and trainers specifically will focus only on one aspect, like the plastic car and carry classes. And they're missing out on millions of our fellow Americans have bought guns that don't want to carry a gun out in public. They just want to have it in their home. Right. And generationally speaking, most people that are, you know, that are Gen Xers and younger all see value in training. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like our grandparents and stuff like that. They were like, I, right, you know, I'm not taking a class. I know all about that. You know, but, right. I mean, you still get folks like that of all ages. But general, you know, generally speaking, I know guys in their fifties that have been riding motorcycles for decades, and they're like, "Yeah, I want to go take a motorcycle class just because." So you see people that want to take training, and, and during the government lockdown of the whole COVID thing, there were millions of guns sold, and a lot of those people came in and said, "I bought this, or I want to buy this. Someone teach me how to use it, yeah, or teach me how to have it in my home." Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest things that I see people doing that I'm finding changes in the in the amount of clients they're bringing in is just offering having a gun in your home class or you're considering buying a pistol, calling a class, something like that. And go back to the basics, mm. you know, and then save your shooty class for the, after they have a level of comfort with that. So you that's, know. A, that's a great idea. I, and that's kind of what my game plan was. I, I'm certified to teach a few of the, the NRA courses. And the NRA courses are great and give everyone a yeah, level of foundation. Total total value there. Right. But what doesn't happen is the USCCA stuff is a lot more practical than the NRA things. Right? Well, it's all purpose built for defense. It is. So even so, like lesson two, we're talking about, you know, the, the gun stuff. It's not an NRA basic pistol course. It's just like, hey, let's look at these different gun types, look at their designs, look at the positives and negatives in regards to using it under stress or, you know, concealing it on your body. Mm -hmm. So it's just meant to help them be a better consumer when they do actually buy their defensive firearm. Then, of course, 
when we teach them to use it, we teach them how to use it in a way that works well with what the body's likely to do under stress based upon the data. That we have. Right. You know, so from there, they can go off and, you know, become more well-regulated and be, you know, better performance shooters and things like that. Wait they a second. Well-regulated. They could be well competitors. They could do, you could do all kinds of different things from there. But that that little old lady that someone busted in their house, you know, and or, and she now wants to buy the gun to protect herself, she doesn't know what to do. And there's so many different options, there's so many different guns, there's so many different kung fu's out there. Yeah. I feel what, what the USCCA offers is the best entry level, bring them in and gets them in the right mindset. Yeah, that's cool. I, yeah, that's what I really like about the classes. It's, there's more, like I said, for me it seems more practical. We're like, what do I do now? I had, um, I was talking with someone last night, having dinner with them, and it was the, you know, we're talking about licensing classes and all that. And uh, I ended up, I was out having a drink with a friend of mine, and gun stuff came up with, with someone that was at the bar, and the lady said she had her license to carry, um, and she's nervous and scared about having a gun. And she's like, I've never shot it, I've had it for, for two or three years, never fired a gun, I don't, know, I don't know what to do with it, I don't have to take it apart. And I'm like, here's my number, give me a call, let's get this worked out. And she dropped the ball, like she didn't, she didn't do a damn thing about it. So and there's only so much I can do. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Yeah, so that's been obviously occupying a great, you know, 40 hours of my week kind of thing. But yeah, I work remote and, you know, my, my manager, Gavin, Gavin Glass and App, he's, he's very kind of offhand. So, you know, yeah. I know what I need to do. I do it got a lot of anonymity it's been a good good experience but i still on my own i take that hat off and i put on my other hats like i said i got stuff on pdn training for coming up and i've been doing a lot more uh in the state in pennsylvania uh since our president of foac and the founder kim stolfer died uh jim stoker actually before he died he knew he was sick and, and jim took over as he was on your show yep he took over as president and i popped up the vice president and we've been doing a lot of work in pennsylvania Unfortunately, we got a lot of work to do. We had a bad election election cycle last year, and so we're having to fight uh, democratically uh, anti-gun majority in the in the House. However, the majority is only by one right now, and then someone stepped down, so it's kind of even Steven right now. But it's but the Democrats still hold the calendar and what gets voted on and what gets brought up in committees. Yeah. So it's uh, what's amazing to me is when I hear about people that have states where. They actually have two parties. Um, in Massachusetts, out of the, I don't know, 128 senators, like six of them are Republicans, the rest are Democrats. So if, you know, if they really wanted to, they could, the anti-gun Democrats could, uh, could completely run roughshod over all of our rights. And that's, that's what they're trying to do with this particular bill. Yeah, unfortunately, the... The Second Amendment should should be pretty like bipartisan. Yeah, it should be it absolutely. Should be. <laughs> and and you know what? And, and I said the the Democrats and and I don't you know our organization Farms Owners Against Crime is is nonpartisan. And a matter of fact, we've been able to stave off a couple of these bills actually passing because of a Democrat named Frank Burns. He's he's been able to he's voting pro gun, and he's a Democrat. So you know I we have to tip tip our hats to him. Absolutely, but. Absolutely. You know, a couple of years ago, we had a red flag law get written by Republicans. So my best advice is for people to vote, but to vet each person they're voting for and look at the records, yeah. listen to what they say. And, you know, if they got a voting record, that's good to see. Sure. Um, but, you know, and, but meet with them and talk to them. Get, you know, get a feel for it. But you have to work to vote. You got to do your research and your due diligence. Oh, yeah. Man. The other thing is, too, in, in Pennsylvania, the mail-in ballot thing, and that's kind of across the country, too. It ain't going away. And I have my own personal opinions about that. But I think we need to embrace that. And, you know, all of your grandmas that won't come out on, on the day to vote, make sure that they get their mail-in ballot and send it in. The mail-in ballot people have, you know, 13 days to vote, something like that. And the people that aren't in the mail-in ballots have 13 hours to vote. So it makes sense that we use that tool to help promote candidates that are for liberty. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Yeah. Was, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the Gun for Hire podcast. And in late 20, what was last? 2023. In late 2023, they had a politician that was a pro-gun guy. Uh, I can't remember if he was, I think he was a Republican. But he's like, listen, he was doing the same sort of thing. It's like we need to embrace the um 
uh, we need to replace the mail-in ballots. Yeah. You know, and he's like, this is what we got to do. This is what we got to do. We need to still mail in vote for whatever. Yeah, I mean, the mail-in ballots are, are definitely, you know, not immune to controversy. Sure. I, I happen... That sounds like the Wendy, like the like mascot from that. Wendy's. It's random, man. I don't like she's get got it. pigtails. <laughs> you got to turn here, mister. So. <laughs> I hope we pick that up. Oh, uh, this one's full. This one's full. All we have left is that yeah, camera right there. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, we are. Uh, uh, we're, we're The other cameras are full. We're back. All right, so before that one gets full, let's just- Oh, I just know this. Continue on Canyon Point Road, one mile. Um, all right, finish it, finish it, thought on mail-in votes. And oh, yeah, I happened to get, like, the last presidential election, I got four ballots showing up in my house. Four. Wow. I took wow. them back and I surrendered them. Yeah. But how many people didn't do that? So there's right. definitely con controversy with it. Don't get me wrong. But, For sure. Uh, we need to get people mobilized. Gun owners need to go out and vote pro-gun. If you believe in the Second Amendment, don't think that someone else is going to fix these problems. Because frankly, if every gun owner went out and voted pro-gun, we would not have the problems we have because the numbers are in our favor. They, they really are. You know, when you hear things that there's whatever, I heard, I think this week I heard that there were 470 million guns in the United States. No, I, I believe so, half of those are Matt's house. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other half are at Mark Lindblom. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. All right, well, listen, we got to wrap things up. We only have that one camera that is way over there. Where can people find uh, Where can people find you? Well, you can find both Matt and I on meetthepressors.com, M-E-E-T, the pressers. Not meet the pressors, meet the pressers. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, my website is triggerpressersunion.com. You can learn more about National Train of Teacher Day on nationaltrainingteacherday.com, which will be on June 22nd this year. June 22nd, okay, cool. Uh, Allegheny County Sportsman's League, you can just Google that, or Firearms Owners Against Crime, you can Google that. But that's where you can find all the stuff I got going. All right, and where can I get you, Slick? Same, meetpressers.com, and then PSNED, or Public Safety and Education Act. All right, and uh, I feel weird talking across the camera. Particularly, there's a cop behind me. Uh oh, Let's get to oh he definitely is yeah. behind you. He is. Um, Thousand feet, slide right onto Gun Club Road. Slide right onto Gun Club Road. Uh, if you have uh, if you have not subscribed to the Writing Shock with Charlie YouTube channel, please make sure you do. Um, if you are not a member of the Second Amendment Foundation, you can go to saf.org, and uh, you can find all of your pre favorite pro freedom podcasts at sdrn.us. That's the Self Defense Radio Network. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for being on the show. Always Thank you, pleasure, sir. Buddy. Thank you, sir. We will see you guys soon. Take care. Take bye bye. The next ride onto Gun Club Road. Or take the next ride.